Hi everyone, Michael Smith here. As a numerologist and former engineer and stats guy, I've always been fascinated by number patterns, especially when the same pattern or number pops up in many different places. One such number is 137. Although it shows up in key places in math, physics, chemistry, and other natural phenomena, why has remained a mystery. In this video, we're going to explore this curious number from various angles to see if we can shed some light on that mystery. Here are some of the better known examples of where 137 shows up to give you an idea of why it's considered so intriguing. First and foremost, the number 137 appears in one of the most important universal constants of nature, what's called the fine structure constant. With a value very close to 1 over 137, this number quantifies the strength of the electromagnetic interaction between elementary charged particles. Essentially, the probability an electron will absorb a photon of light. Speaking of light, 137 also happens to be the number of atoms in the chlorophyll molecule, the all-important molecule plants use to collect sunlight for photosynthesis to convert it to energy for the plant with oxygen as a byproduct for life to breathe. And speaking of plants, 137.5 degrees is the golden angle according to which plants arrange their stems and leaves for optimal exposure, exposure to sunlight and radial symmetry of the plant for structural stability. In a more general sense, the golden angle represents the golden ratio of essential traits inherited from one generation to the next, one cycle to the next, or one fractal to the next. Likewise, in geometry, 137 also shows up as the highest density packing of identical circles for the most efficient use of space. This optimal packing arrangement is hexagonal, of seven circles, that being six around one, which in turn consists of optimal triangular packings of individual circles, and we'll touch on that shortly. We even see 137 in the current age of the universe, which is estimated between 13.7 to 13.8 billion years old. And if you're into prime numbers, 137 is also the 33rd prime number. All of these high profile appearances of 137 seem to hit at, hint at more than just coincidence. So let's examine each to see if a common theme emerges. We'll also touch on my prime vibration model of physics and base 12 numerology to help with that effort. Because of its importance to physics, we'll start off with the fine structure constant, denoted by the Greek letter alpha. Again, this number represents the electromagnetic interaction between charged particles. Essentially, the odds an electron will absorb a photon. Where it gets its name is that it was first discovered in the spectral lines given off by the simplest atom, hydrogen, when illuminated by photons of light, the fine structure being the gap between those lines. As such, every different element has a unique spectral fingerprint which can be used to discern to determine such things as the composition of distant stars and galaxies. Although not exactly equal to 1 over 137, it's very close. Current best estimates put it at around 1 over 137.036. The precise formula for the fine structure constant is E squared over HC. Because it's derived from the charge of the electron E, the speed of light C, and a constant of quantum mechanics called Planck's constant H, it ties together three main areas of physics, electromagnetism, relativity, and quantum theory. And because all the units cancel out, it's considered a dimensionless constant, which therefore applies universally to any system of measurement. The fact that such an important characteristic of nature has defied explanation has sparked the curiosity of many a physicist, including Arnold uh, Sommerfeld, who first named it, and Nobel winners Richard Feynman and Wolfgang Pauli. In fact, Pauli became so obsessed with the number that he sought out the famous psychoanalyst Carl Jung to help him decipher its meaning. In a strange twist of fate, Pauli was in hospital room number 137 when he passed. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that 1 over 137 of the electromagnetic bond also happens to equal point double oh seven, another enigmatic bond with the license to kill. Another quirk about the number one over one thirty seven is that it equals a repeating decimal number with the same eight repeating digits of zero seven two nine nine two seven zero, and which are also palindromic, 
meaning they read the same forwards or backwards. And if you're into symbology, the letter alpha is derived from the Phoenician letter Aleph, which coincidentally looks just like our modern symbol of an eye looking, of seeing what's illuminated, and just like the trigonometry symbol for measuring an angle, of expressing a portion of a cycle, which brings us to the golden angle. The rotational angle of 137.5 degrees plays a big role in nature as the golden angle of self-similar regeneration in natural cycles. Based upon the golden ratio of traits being preserved in a consistent way from one generation to the next, it essentially represents the idea of a child being like its parent, just as the parent is to its grandparent. Or in terms of sectors of a circle as shown here, 360 degrees in black is to 222.5 degrees in blue, just as 222.5 is to 137.5 in orange. Mathematically, the golden ratio is typically expressed as a ratio between consecutive numbers of the Fibonacci series, an infinite series which eventually converges to the irrational number 1.618, etc., which I cover in another video. This golden angle of cyclical consistency is perhaps most clearly seen in the way plants grow. Branches, stems, and leaves tend to follow this radial stagger of 137.5 degrees around the central trunk or stalk of the plant. This not only distributes the weight of the appendages evenly to keep the plant stable, but more importantly, maximizes the exposure of its leaves to sunlight so that photosynthesis can be optimized. Interestingly, the chlorophyll molecule, which collects sunlight for photosynthesis, converting water and carbon dioxide into energy for the plant and oxygen as a byproduct, likewise consists of 137 atoms. So, just as 137 optimizes plant structure for exposing chlorophyll to light, 137 also optimizes the molecular structure of chlorophyll itself for utilizing that light. In a purely geometric way, 137 also describes the optimal packing of identical circles to best utilize an available area. This packing arrangement is the hexagonal of seven circles, six around one, which in turn consists of triangular packings of individual circles. This progression from one to three to seven is just a different way that 137 can show up as a sequence of three optimization steps instead of a single optimized number. Interestingly, the next higher level uh, packing configuration containing the hexagon is the dodecagon of 12 circles around six, around one. The same pattern as the primary mirror of the recently launched James Webb, Webb telescope, only there using hex hexagons instead of circles, so as to fully utilize the surface area with no gaps. And the same ultra efficient honeycomb structure mastered by bees to store the maximum amount of honey within a minimum structure of wax. Now that we've looked at various ways 137 shows up in nature, particularly in the mathematics of energetic cycles, let's examine the number cycle itself, in particular the base 12 cycle. That's because when numbers are described in their most fundamental way as prime numbers, it's the base 12 cycle that seems to express them most simply and efficiently. And that base 12 cycle generates the figure eight vibrational pattern shown, shown here, what I call the base 12 prime vibration. For reasons covered in depth in my other videos, I suggest this may be the fundamental vibrational cycle through which probabilities manifest into physical reality. And because it's generated by the base 12 cycle, the prime vibration consists of 12 quantum states or frequencies, much like the 12 note octave of a musical scale. These 12 frequencies have a rotational geometry as well, not only a vertical amplitude like the 2D vibration of a guitar string, but also an angle of spin into or out of the page, much like the twisting 3D double helix shape of DNA. The 12 rotational angles are shown here as little blue arrows in the 12 increments of the base 12 cycle, essentially what each of those rotational angles would look like from a side view. However, as observers of our reality, what we perceive is just the figure eight front view projection of the 3D prime vibration, like the 2D image on a TV screen. And that projection takes the form of a figure eight vibration shown here, consisting of two half cycles from positions zero to six and six to 12. 
essentially mirror images of each other, but opposite in polarity. The left side of positive probability that we perceive, and the right side of negative probability that's hidden. What this model suggests is that reality is fundamentally vibrational, and that everything emerges through resonance with this 12-stage cycle. So, in the left half cycle from 0 to 6 that we experience, we see that its maximum projection as a probability range is achieved at position 3, its highest energy as a point probability at position 0, and its lowest energy as a point probability at position 6. As such, for the prime vibration as a manifestation cycle at all scales of nature, its optimal state of physical expression is achieved at position 3, halfway between its unmanifest ground state of position 6, that is, the Higgs field at rest, and its fully energized kinetic state of position 0, a photon of light in motion. Position 3 as reality at its most manifest is indeed reflected at all scales of nature for that Goldilocks position. At the subatomic scale with the top quark as the maximum par particle of mass, at the atomic scale with neutral atoms as the building blocks of composite matter, at the medium scale with complex biological life occurring at the very midpoint between the largest and smallest scales of nature, and at the cosmic scale with the 13.7 billion year old universe at its maximum size, stability, and probability range for complexity to emerge, including us. As such, position 3 as nature at its most optimal, in a vibrational sense, seems to be synonymous with 137 in a physical sense. And like the golden angle discussed previously, position 3 represents the maximum expression of a cycle outward into form. Where the prime vibration views reality as a vibrational cycle of distinct quantum frequencies, numerology takes it a step further by giving each number frequency a distinct theme or meaning with which it resonates. Although there's various approaches to numerology, here I'll use the two I'm most familiar with, the traditional base 10 Pythagorean system developed by Pythagoras of ancient Greece and my own base 12 adaptation of that system where the base 10 or decimal system gives meanings to the numbers from 0 to 9, the base 12 or duodecimal approach gives meanings to 0 through 11. These 12 themes are shown here in the prime vibration, with color-coded dots representing the color frequencies they represent. Note that I've also underlined the 10 and 11 here to denote them as single digits in base 12 rather than the double digit numbers as in base 10. Now in numerology, you reduce a number to its single digit theme by adding together any multiple digits. The only exceptions to this are twin digit numbers, such as 11, 22, or 33, which aren't typically reduced further. These are called master numbers, and basically represent the idea of mastering a higher octave of its single digit theme. First, let's look at the numerology of the number 137 itself. In base 10, 137 reduces to 1 plus 3 plus 7 equals master number 11, which means illumination in base 10 numerology. To instead find its meaning in base 12 numerology, we first need to convert 137 from base 10 to base 12, which is 11, 5 in base 12. That is 11 dozen plus 5 remainder. This in turn reduces to 11 plus 5, again it equals 14 in base 12, that is 1 dozen plus 4 remainder. But since it's not yet a single digit, we reduce once more to get 1 plus 4 equals 5, which means change through new beginnings of structure, the 5 energy through the 1 and the 4. So we see that both base 10 and base 12 approaches offer fitting numerological meanings for 137, just from slightly different perspectives. Of the 11 energy in base, base 10 as the illumination of a photon of light, say, and the 14.5 energy in base 12 as the fine structure of the different frequencies of that light. Next, we'll consider the numerology of the fine structure constant of 1 over 137, when expressed as a decimal number. As we touched on earlier, this is a repeating decimal number of the same uh, eight digits of 0729-9270, and which are also palindromic, reading the same forwards or backwards. When those digits are added and reduced to a single digit, we get the 9 of completion in base 10, 
such that every iteration of that sequence is basically a complete cycle. Likewise, in base 12, those eight digits reduce to the three of the catalyst of something that creates influence, in this case of repeating the palindrome sequence again and again. The number 137, as mentioned previously, also happens to be the 33rd prime number, which in base 10 is master number 33 of mastering the catalytic theme, and in base 12, the 11 of illumination. So even through the more esoteric lens of numerology, we find a similar interpretation of 137 emerging as we did with a scientific viewpoint, an interpretation that becomes apparent when we recap what we just covered. Starting with the fine structure constant, we saw how 137 essentially represents the optimal expression of electromagnetism as the fundamental interaction between matter and light then onto the golden angle as the optimal radial configuration of plants for maximum sun exposure and of optimal regeneration from one cycle or fractal to the next. Next, the chlorophyll molecule as the optimal collector of that sunlight for photosynthesis and the air we breathe, the 137 packing of circles for optimal density in a purely geometric sense, and finally, position three of the base 12 prime vibration as the optimal manifestation of reality in a theoretical sense. Finally, with numerology in which 137 resonates with the 11 energy of illumination in base 10 and the 14.5 energy of change through new beginnings of structure in base 12, both reflecting that same idea of optimal illumination expressed through structure. So from all the different circumstances in which 137 arises, a consistent interpretation does seem to emerge as that of the optimal expression of an energetic cycle. Or as I hinted at in the title of the video, 137 may be the most illuminating number, quite literally, when it comes to natural cycles. And as we saw, such cycles can take many forms, vibrational as with electromagnetism of the fine structure constant and the base 12 prime vibration, geometric as with the golden angle and circle packing, chemical as with the chlorophyll molecule, generational as with the golden angle of inherited traits, and even numerological, when we consider numbers as a cycle of vibrational themes we can experience. In all cases, we find the number 137 emerge when each cycle is at its optimal state of expression, manifestation, and illumination. And maybe that's why 137 fascinates so many people. As society becomes more enlightened, we resonate more closely with the vibrational nature of who we truly are and how we can express ourselves most fully and authentically. We are definitely in a time where truths are being illuminated and the contrast between light and dark being highlighted so that we can follow a brighter path. And like 137, as a universal constant that applies equally to all, that brighter path is meant to be walked together so that we bring out the best in each other. That to me is what 137 is all about, at least metaphorically. And the various ways it shows up in nature is a constant reminder that everything is ultimately energy seeking its op optimal expression and doing so through creative cycles, including us. Thanks for watching.